Welcome to another edition of Walton Entertainment. Today, we'll have more news, information, and entertainment from your local hometown. Walton County Parks and Recreation Department reminds you of fall sports registration at Meridian Park, Felker Park, and South Walton Park. This is going on May 4th through the 10th. Remember, they're closed on Sunday. For more information, contact Meridian Park at 770-266-1650 or Felker Park at 770-267-7525 or South Walton Park at 770-464-3374. And don't forget about the Fishing Derby. Meridian Park's Fishing Derby is Saturday, April 27th, 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. It happens at Matthews Park in Monroe, Saturday, May 4th from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. And remember, there's no entry fee. It's free. So bring your family and enjoy some of Walton County's great parks. Thank you for watching. I'm Dina Huff, the Executive Director for the Partnership for Families, Children, and Youth. And today, my lovely guest is Lauren Gregory with A Child's Voice Advocacy Center. And this month is National Child Abuse Prevention Month and Awareness Month. And we've been doing several things around the county. You may have seen some things, and I'm gonna let Lauren tell you a little bit about those things a little later. But first, we're gonna ask about um, the center where you work. Tell us a little yes, bit about the center. Well, first, thanks so much for having me today, yeah. Dina. Um, the place I work is called a Child's Voice Child Advocacy Center. So the Child Advocacy Center model is a national model. So there's mm -hmm. Child Advocacy Centers all over the country and some even in different countries. But the whole idea behind the Child Advocacy Center is that it's one place that a child can go to talk about what's happened to them when they've experienced abuse. Mm -hmm. So instead of a child having to talk to their teacher and the counselor and the police officer and the child protection worker and all these other different people they can come to one place and tell their story one time in a really safe way and then we work to make sure that anything they need we work together to do so we work through what's called a multidisciplinary team approach so we work closely with law enforcement defects the district attorney's office the school system mental health counselors to make sure that whatever a kid needs after they've experienced something like severe abuse we're able to connect those resources for them. Um, we also do a lot of community education and outreach and prevention. So April is our favorite month because it's yeah. Child Abuse Prevention Month. So this month we've been trying to do just more awareness, mm -hmm. educating people. Um, people may have seen blue pinwheels around town, which that's the symbol of safe and healthy childhoods. Mm -hmm. So in April we put out pinwheels for awareness and then we do other trainings and community events. Okay. Well, what if, um, what can parents do? I mean, if they suspect that something's going on, what are the steps that, that you all would recommend for a parent or um, a coach or a caregiver? Or I could come up with several examples, yeah. but what do you suggest to others? So we say first that child abuse is an adult issue. So it's always the adult's responsibility, the parent or the caregiver or the coach or any mm -hmm. adult who's in a child's life that if they suspect something or they feel like something's been going on, or especially if a child tells them that something has happened, mm -hmm. that they make a report. Mm -hmm. So to make a report, there's kind of two options and either one is fine. You can report to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So that would be, you know, going to your local law enforcement or even calling 911 if you think a child's in severe danger. Um, or you can make a report to DFACS, and that sounds really scary to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. But what that means is just that you're asking for a professional to come in and check on the situation. Mm -hmm. So in our state, if you make a report and it ends up that it's not true, there's no ramifications for you. It's called a good faith report. So we recommend that any suspicion, anything that seems off, and you know, if a kid says something that's concerning, that you just make that report. And what it means is that then DFACS or law enforcement or whoever We'll kind of evaluate the situation and then if they deem that it meets their criteria then they'll investigate it it doesn't mean that a kid's going to get taken away it doesn't mean that somebody's going to automatically get arrested it just means mm -hmm. that professionals will get involved to make sure the child's safe so there's a couple different ways the in georgia there's a it's called centralized intake but there's a phone number that you call mm -hmm. and that's 1-855-GA-CHILD mm -hmm. so 1-855-GEORGIA-CHILD and you call and you just give as much information as you can. Um, and that just helps make sure that the kid is protected because we don't ever really know for right. sure, especially that early on, but we wanna make sure that people get involved to talk to the child and make sure that they are okay. Um, and again, adults are protected when they make that. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that they'll get in trouble. 
Um, it's also confidential, so when you make the report, you don't necessarily have to give your name. You can just give the information that you mm -hmm. have, and then the people will take that information and go and investigate. Okay. Well, what are the ages of the kids that would actually be interviewed at your center? So we see, we'll talk to kids about three is about the youngest, but up until 18, okay. just because, you know, under three, it can be hard for a kid okay. to really talk about something. Um, so three to 18, we'll talk to, if they're older and have a developmental delay or a disability, mm -hmm. we may talk to them as well. Mm -hmm. um, older than 18, usually they'll talk to a law enforcement officer who's, you know, who kind of works these cases right. and who's used to these cases. Right. Um, our center also offers medical exams and we can do medical exams on kids who are younger. Okay. So even if we can't do the actual interview, we can still do the medical exam to make sure their bodies are healthy. Okay. Well, I know that um, you all were our guests at our collaborative meeting, and you talked about some different ways that organizations can um, receive training mm -hmm. on how to report or what to look for. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about this uh, Darkness to Light program. Okay. The Darkness to Light program is a really great evidence-based sexual abuse prevention training. Mm -hmm. So we really like it because the fact that it's evidence-based means that we know that it works, mm -hmm. that it teaches adults really things that they can do to protect kids. So our center offers it free of charge to people in our community. Mm -hmm. So we serve Walton County and Newton County. I know people watching this are all Walton County. Mm -hmm. um, so in Walton County, any adult any group of adults can get the training for free. Mm -hmm. It's a two-hour training that has videos and discussions that's designed to teach adults how to recognize child abuse mm -hmm. and then talks more about kind of how to report. And we talk a lot about recognizing that because a lot of times, especially child sexual abuse, it can be a kid doesn't often have a symptom. They don't mm -hmm. often, you can't look at them and tell that they've right. been abused. So a lot of times those signs and symptoms are a little less clear. It mm -hmm. may be things like you know, they were potty trained, but now they're having accidents mm -hmm. or they're not sleeping well, they're having nightmares, maybe their tummy hurts a lot, maybe they get headaches. Any kind of physical symptom like that that doesn't have a direct cause could be a sign of abuse. Mm -hmm. It could also be a sign of something else. Right. So what we encourage is if you notice things like that in a child, and the training talks about this more, is just to ask questions, you know, mm -hmm. hey, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. Hey, has something happened? We say don't, you know, don't go up to a child and say, hey, who touched you or who right. abused you? Right. But just paying attention and asking, mm -hmm. you know, how are things going? Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to talk about? Um, anything you want to tell me? You know, it's okay to talk to me. Things like that to make sure the child feels like they can talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, we know that I think it's less than 40% of kids will talk about the abuse they've experienced. Wow. And especially for boys, sometimes they won't tell for like 20 to 25 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So it's a long time to keep a really big secret for a child. Mm -hmm. And those effects can be, you know, it can turn into things like post-traumatic stress disorder, mm -hmm. or other mental health things that once, you know, once it kind of comes out, the child can then get the treatment they need to heal. Right. So just adults, it's really important that adults ask those questions, pay attention. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask a kid what's going on. Yeah. Well, and I know that um, for those trainings, we're here at the partnership, we're willing to facilitate a training mm -hmm. and uh, put a group together, but you do have to have a certain number of people. Yeah, we like to have a, at least 10 because okay. it is a discussion-based training, so if it's just a couple people, sometimes it's not as rich right. of a discussion. Right. Um, but we also, you know, we do the trainings too, so we have some it's scheduled at our center you. right now later in the month. Um, and then some right. at different locations that are open to the public. Okay. And we can kind of like y'all, you know, if a couple people tell us they want the training, we can try to connect it with a couple other people to make okay. a group work. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about what I know that you have had several drawings on yes. live on Facebook. So tell us what you've been doing for yes. Child Abuse Prevention Month. So every April we do our big fundraiser and it's the Give Child Abuse a Spring Break raffle of it. Mm -hmm. So we get raffle prizes donated. And this year I think we had I think at least 20 prizes, no more than 20. We drew a prize every business day in April. Uh -huh. So we're still drawing prizes and we're drawing two on Friday. So we sell raffle tickets, they're $10 a ticket. And mm -hmm. then every day this year on Facebook Live, we're drawing the prize so people can watch it live or you know, go back and watch it later. Uh -huh. But there's still time to drop, to buy tickets. You yeah. can buy tickets through the very last day. I'm um, in the very last day, I think, is Southwest Airlines tickets. Oh, so okay. Um, still, still an exciting prize. Oh, yeah. But we're drawing prizes. We're having community partners, some of our board members or people we partner with, come mm -hmm. help to kind of show who we work with and also to hear their perspective about our center. 
um, and then giving away prizes. Great. Yeah, it's been sounds, a lot of fun. Yeah, sounds like fun. Yeah. Anything else coming up that you'd like to share that y'all have going on? I think that's pretty much it. Um, if any like mental health professionals end up watching this, we are doing a training series in play therapy right now okay. with a local play therapist. Um, but other than that, you know, we're just kind of chugging along with prevention and education and then helping make sure that kids in our county who need help are getting it. Okay. Well, thank yeah. you for what you do. And thank I you. know um, your group um, always does a great job in the community protecting our children. So we do appreciate that. And thank, thank you, you for coming this morning. Yeah, thank you so much. And if you have any questions about how you can get involved, um, you can always call us here at the partnership. Um, my direct line is 770-207-3175. Or if you have questions about resources you need in Walton County, please feel free to reach out to us. And as always, thank you for watching. Are you in need of tractor work, bush hogging, grading, cleaning, sod installs, and drainage repair? Then you need Bold Springs Landscape Solutions. Bold Springs Landscape Solutions is a licensed, insured, and certified landscape solutions company. Their services include grading and drainage, bush hogging, and clearing work, as well as fencing, landscape, and sod installation. Contact Bold Springs Landscape Solutions today. Hi, this is Jody Johnson and I'm here with the Recreation Report. Uh, it is uh, really the beginning of spring and we're about halfway through most of our uh, spring activities, which is our athletic program, which is our baseball and softball program, which we're about halfway through the season. We'll end uh, about the middle of May and then our soccer season the same way and we have our track and field. We've got a couple more meets with them and uh, so all our sports are doing real well. The weather's been working out pretty well. The rain is uh, still coming in and out. But for the most part, we're able to get most of our games in, so uh, about halfway through with our spring season. But uh, another thing that happens about this time of year is that we open up our ponds. As you know, DNR brings us uh, about a thousand little small catfish, and they're all about six to eight inches long, and they uh, bring them in December, and then we, we try to feed them enough to, uh, to let them grow uh, you know, to a decent size. Uh, but this uh, coming up April 27th, at Meridian Park we'll have our fishing derby uh, and then on May 4th we'll have our fishing derby at Matthews Park uh, and what that means uh, fishing derby is we really want to encourage uh, you know adults to come but adults to bring kids it's about you know, bringing kids fishing and teaching them how and, uh, and working with them so uh, they do usually catch a good bit of fish and then we have some uh, other events as well so uh, the age groups that we have our competitions with are ages 4 and 5, uh, 6 and 8, 9 and 10, and then 13 and up. And the two uh, contests that we have is obviously uh, the biggest fish in those categories, so the person that catches the biggest fish. And last uh, year, I want to say they caught like a 10 or 12 pound uh, catfish at Meridian Park. So there are some big fish out there, even though we do put uh, a lot of small ones in. Um, apparently one got uh, uh, extra, extra big, and uh, they did catch over a 10 pounder last year uh, at Meridian Park. Uh, then we also have a casting contest. We'll put a bullseye out, and uh, based off the age group or how far you have to cast the ball, uh, the the, uh, the rods that we provide has a weight on it, and uh, you get a few casts, and then you get points based on how uh, close you are to the bullseye. So those two uh, events, the casting contest and the biggest fish, uh, will start at 6 a.m. Remember the uh, uh, fish start biting early in the morning, so 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. <coughs> So 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. April 27th at Meridian Park and May 4th at Matthews Park. And then after that, we'll have the ponds open for general fishing uh, for everyone. We have to close them each year because of uh, DNR giving us those fish. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a little cold going on. Like everyone else, the pollen is uh, really, really high uh, this time of year. So it's really got me a little congested. So if you're in the same boat I am, uh, you know, hopefully this uh, rain is coming in soon. We'll Watch some of this out and we can all get well. Uh, what's going on in, uh, in the recreation world as well is uh, we have a lot of people that are booking pavilions right now. And if you're planning on having a birthday party or a picnic or a family reunion, uh, you need to go on our website at waltoncountyga.gov or you need to call one of our community centers. If you go to our website, you can find the number to call and get that reserved because they do go fast. Uh, we rent a lot of pavilions. And we have about uh, between 12 and 14 depending on what you uh, what want to have and the number of people that you're going to have at your event and you can find the uh, site that will work best for you. 
So uh, go online and uh, book your pavilion rentals. They're uh, $30, they're not uh, really expensive. Um, and then you get to utilize the, uh, the park as well. So uh, get online and do that. Again, they're, they're really booking up fast. Uh, we also want to always invite you to come to our community centers. You know, there's not any pollen in the, on the inside if you want to walk there. Uh, also, we have our, our treadmills and ellipticals and all those things that, uh, that keep you in shape and keep you healthy and keep Walton active is uh, really our mission to, uh, to keep Walton moving. So uh, I ask you to come down to the community centers and do that. The uh, last thing I want to uh, let you know is that we will be having our uh, fall registration. It will be coming up pretty soon. We've got summer basketball that just uh, our registration just ended. But there may be a few spots left for summer basketball if you're interested in that. Uh, it's played in the, the Monroe area, maybe a few games in the Loganville area. Uh, but we have close to 300 kids that have already signed up for summer basketball. Uh, and then we'll have our fall registration uh, at the uh, end of May, right before school lets out, for all the fall registrations, which is our biggest uh, uh, time of year because we have a lot of different sports going on, which is our football and, uh, and uh, cheerleading, baseball, softball, soccer, all those things going on at one time. So we end up with you know, almost uh, 2,000 kids that participate in the fall. So look for that coming out soon towards the end of May. It's a really busy time with graduations and uh, the school ending parties and all that. But don't miss the registration. And uh, it's a lot easier now that we have it online. Uh, so it's uh, no reason to miss out on that. So just want to remind everyone, as always, sportsmanship starts at home. We'd love to have you volunteer here at the Recreation Department. We're always in need of coaches. So until next time, thank you very much. And now let's drop in at the Monroe Walton Center for the Arts. Always something beautiful on display from many local talented artists right here in Walton County. things that we have going on here in terms of our classes and our pottery studio and our art camps and our gallery shows of course we've got two jury shows coming up this year and so just welcome to the art center appreciate all of y'all being here I have to say as the person that's here on the ground you know day to day people are astounded at the level of talent they just, I mean, just kind of walk through this show open mouth. I mean, it's just amazing. So I would like to give everybody <laughs> and our teachers. If you're a teacher, wave at us. And then we've got Steve, <laughs> we've got Christina, Tracy, Where's Richard? I didn't see Richard. I'm missing Richard. Hi, I'm back there. Oh, there he is. <laughs> so our teachers really do such a great job. I have to say, kind of as a sneak peek into our congressional district-wide show, um, it's not just Walton County. It's districts, you know, it's the entire 10th district. And pretty much the Walton County schools, as they did last year, swept those awards um, pretty well and I'm not supposed to say but <laughs> I'm just really um, proud of you all it's just really a privilege to be here for this show and the work see the work that you all do so and what makes this night really special for us is that uh, the Savannah College of Art and Design is here for us presenting scholarships and awards to the winners. Uh, Tiara Bar Boyd is the Assistant Director of Enrollment. And um, she did not judge the show. The show was judged last week by Tom Francis, who's also, of course, with SCAT. But if you have any questions, be sure to talk to her after we make these announcements. Pick her brain. I know that they love to have students come and visit the campus and work with them on other scholarships and other opportunities that are out there for the students. So just welcome, Tiara, thank you. 
so much. Thank you. Thank All right. You. All right. I'll help you any way you All right. <clears throat> well, first I want to say hello to everyone. Uh, new faces and those that I've met before. Hey again. Um, so uh, first I want to say congratulations to everyone here. I know that especially when I was in the seat that you guys were in, these types of nights were really big for me. And I know that you've put a lot of hard work and had a lot of inspiration and a lot of passion into everything that you've done. So congratulations to everyone. But we do have uh, three awards that we would love to give out to some students. So what these are, they are scholarship awards um, if a student uh, does decide to commit to the university. So the first one I would like to give out is for Hyung Lee. is for Charity Jackson. <laughs> and then the last one we're going to give out is for Sarah Hadabi. <laughs> so I guess we'll leave this. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Now, um, if anyone has any questions for me regarding the university, regarding portfolios, of course, I can't be here until like 10 o'clock, but um, I would love to connect with any students and parents that have any questions for me. That's kind of what my job is. Um, so thank you guys. Again, everyone here is absolutely amazing, and I would love to see what you guys decide to do in the future. Thank you. Could I get a picture of the winners? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Creative artists can offer you a wide range of video production. Call the experts and discuss your project today, whether it's your special event or your company. Creative artist. 770-267-7368. Creative Artists produces this program you're watching. Call Creative Artists today. 770-267-7368. Creative Artists. They'll put you in the spotlight. Watching Walton Entertainment. As people, we're just curious about how things work. We want to get closer and more involved to see the inner workings. Welcome to A Look Inside. Join us as we take a closer look at people, places, and things, and what makes them work. Well, the ambulances these days are mobile, uh, are mobile intensive care units. So we carry uh, equipment that you would normally find in an emergency room, uh, such as cardiac monitors, uh, IV drugs, uh, all the equipment to uh, do invasive procedures to save lives, uh, whatever aspect that may be. So what you hear up here is a life pack. It's a life pack 15. It does all our shocks um, for patients who are in cardiac arrest. We have leads. We have pads to shock the victim in cardiac arrest. This is connected for blood pressure. So we have blood pressure. We have a saturation monitor that reads how, many, how much oxygen is attached to each red blood cell. And then we also have our leads here that are attached to the patient. So we can read heart rhythms. Uh, we can actually 
uh, take 12 pictures of the heart, six horizontal and six vertical, to find out if they're actually having a heart attack or some sort of cardiac event. We're able to determine whether they're having an event or not. These are called intubation tools. And this is what we use to, to save somebody's life when they're not breathing. This is a laryngo these are the laryngoscope and these are blades. They simply connect in together. We put this into the patient's mouth and we take an ET tube, an endotracheal tube, and pass it through the vocal cords into the lungs. We secure it and we breathe for them. Uh, this is a very, very useful uh, tool in saving lives in cardiac arrest or in respiratory arrest. One that we use very often, uh, twice yesterday in fact with good results. So we go all the way from adult to child. What we have in here is our bag that carries even more equipment. This is called an Easy IO. It's an interosseous needle. And what we use this for is if we have a critical patient who's unconscious and unresponsive, doesn't matter if it's an adult or a child, this is a drill. And we actually take the drill, we put the needle on the end, and we drill it into the bone marrow. That way we can give fluid and IV medication straight into the bone marrow. We can take people's temperatures, uh, we can take their blood sugar, we uh, carry tourniquets and a full range of medication in here as well. Dextrose. Glucagon for hypoglycemic patients. All kinds of cardiac medication here to save the cardiac arrest victim. All the drugs that paramedics carry these days. There are numerous pharmacological agents that we carry to help any victim in any situation. All right, so that's what's inside uh, a mobile intensive care ambulance. Uh, paramedic and EMT uh, are, are, are the people that make up this ambulance. Uh, the ambulance itself, uh, without it being stocked, without all the equipment that you see here, is worth around 130000 Once you stock the ambulance, you're probably looking at another 80000 or more, depending on the equipment uh, that you have in here. So it's a, it's a very expensive operation, uh, but it's a very uh, needy and a very um, uh, a very wanted sort of operation so um, the public don't usually see that but um, uh, when we go to houses some of them are very surprised about the kind of equipment that we bring in and the things that we're able to do because they never knew that they had that resource within the community where do you come alive a stadium, lecture hall, a music hall, church potluck? This year, you have a new spot, walkgeorgia.org, a free website that provides you with all the resources needed to get your heart rate up and body out in your community. Sign up and receive individual or group fitness tracking, fitness demos by certified trainers, recipes, and a guide to resources in your Georgia county, all in one easy-to-use site. When you move more, you live more. Walkgeorgia.org. Newton County number one was the address of your emergency. I mean, I'm proud of what I do, especially when I know I've helped someone or I'm getting someone help. I like to imagine I'm talking to someone or how would I want someone in my family when they called, how would they want them to be talked to? I mean, definitely, you know, you always like to, to be able to give back to the community. You like to help everybody out. Um, and me personally, I've never been on the situation where I've had to call 911. I mean, not all the time. I mean, there might have been a couple of times, but 
if I were to be calling 911, then I would want, you know, somebody to be able to help me. So I'm just going to try to flip their roles, like, you know, okay, well, I'm going to speak to them how they would want me to speak to them. And I actually show that the medics just got there. But it's definitely been different, I would say. I know that this job is not made for a lot of people. But you know, just based on the, the calls, some of the calls that you get, and then, you know, some of them are really hard to deal with, so to speak, just because they touch you emotionally. 10 7 LEC 11 22. I was pregnant last year when I got a call about a five month old that had went into cardiac arrest, which is stopped breathing and was unconscious. And that really kind of hit home with me because I knew I was pregnant and about to have my own child. And so it was just a. That one's harder now. Now that I have my own child, dealing with a lot of the the calls that deal with children and infants, kind of hits home a little bit more for me. All right, 197 tag returns. 2003. Everybody has an emergency, um, whether it's a man or a woman, a, a juvenile or an adult. It's just when someone is in need of an emergency, you're in need of an emergency. It's it's not about who you are as a person or what color. I don't know. 91 20, go ahead. Where do you want the officers to go to? Well, we get escorts a lot, and usually it's important to know like why we're getting an escort. So if like, if it's a related to a domestic call, then the officers could be there in case the boyfriend's still on location or the girlfriend. Or if they just want to pick up their belongings, you know, because they're moving out, that's always good to just have an, you know, to prevent an argument from happening. You know, just to have an officer there, to, so everything is controlled, so. One subject's going to be in a black jacket, the other Newton County's 911 Center recently released its 2014 annual report, which found that even though call volume had risen, dispatch times had gone down by three seconds. Director Mike Smith says getting dispatch times down is crucial to serving the community better. Obviously, if we can get our, our dispatch times down, that means we're getting uh, the first responders that we need to the scene faster. The, the quicker we can get a call dispatched, the quicker we get help there. So by them doing that and, and getting those down, it, it, it greatly enhances the response of what we can deliver the services to, to the public or the public safety responders. Spring is here and it's time for those new spring portraits. Hi, I'm your photographer, Daryl Everidge. Listen, I've got a super special package for spring. 20 minute session, 15 digital images. Now they can be in black and white color, your choice, you let me know. My calendar is filling up for April, just a few slots available. Let me know this week if you'd like to book for a portrait spring session for April this week. 770-656-5794. So we're out at Babyland General. And this is in Cleveland, Georgia, which is not far from Helen. We're gonna see what we can find to do today on a back road treasure that takes you out amongst the mountains. I think the clouds have cleared up a little bit so we're gonna go out and see if we can find some fun stuff and give you maybe a, a pistorique look of what we're gonna to find today here in Cleveland and in Helen. Babyland General Hospital is the birthplace of Cabbage Patch Dolls located in Cleveland, Georgia. Xavier Roberts converted an old clinic into a facility which now sells his dolls, originally called Little People. The facility is presented as a birthing, nursery, and adoption center for premium Cabbage Patch kids. Since those days, the Babyland General Hospital has moved into their $2.5 million location here in Cleveland, Georgia. And my feet don't touch the floor, but that's nothing unusual. But this is a cool cabbage too, yeah. is it not? It's cool. And this is Mildred, the second original Cabbage Patch Kid, adopted May 28, 1977. Hurry up, 
So we're inside baby land right now. This is amazing. Look, these, these things are going up and down here. Cabbage. Right here. Welcome to Babyland General Hospital. I'm Dr. Caleb. Nurse And we're going to be assisting Mother Kyle in this delivery. Now understand that this is a Planned Parenthood. Is it Caroline? Yep. Okay, well let's give her a hand because she's actually already adopted this baby. Yep. Yay! Congratulations, Caroline. Okay. And let's check and see. Mother Cabbage is dilated to full 10 leaves, which is normal for a cabbage delivery. Now the way that we know that Mother Cabbage is in labor are when the crystals at the base of the tree begin to glow. And you see the bunny bees up above us? They sprinkle their magic pollen, and that determines if we're going to have a boy or a girl. Now what were you hoping for? A girl? Okay, well, we're going to do a quick sonogram. Okay. It does look like we have a happy baby. What do you think, Nurse Chanda? I think you're going to have a baby girl. Yeah. Okay. Now one of the first things we like to give Mother Cabbage is a large dose of Imagicillin. Now this is just going to help keep her relaxed before and after the delivery. Now we also like to give Mother Cabbage a large dose of TLC. Helen, do you know what TLC stands for? Tender loving care is right. Can you see, can you see that? I see, I see hair. Yeah, we see hair, which means that our interns remember to fertilize the patch last night. Which also means that the head is coming first, which is good. If it were feet first, it would be a branch delivery. She could be here all day. And now I do see blonde hair and blue eyes. That was what you were hoping for, right? Yeah. Okay. Now can I get y'all all to help out Caroline and Mother Cabbage? And on the count of three, yell push as loud as you can. Okay, so one, two, three. Push! Y'all can do better than that. One, two, three. Push! Hey, good job. There she is. Good girl. Now, like I said, our interns did remember to fertilize the patch last night. That's how she was going with her hair. She does have big blue eyes and an abby belly button. I'll show y'all one more thing, but y'all try not to laugh. You'll notice that she does have the Xavier Roberts birthmark. Let's cover up, I think she's starting to blush. Okay, now before we can take her back to the nursery, do you want to tell everybody what you're going to name her? Ella May? Ella May. She sounds like she's going to be a princess when she grows up. We're going to take her back over here to the nursery and you can watch us give her a check of anything. Well, let's give both of them a round of applause. They're getting ready for their spring event here in Cabbage Patch World, I like to call it, here in Cleveland. The balloons, people are decorating the room. This time next week, this place will be packed. People coming to see the Cabbage Patch Kids and all the magic that happens right here. With so much excitement and entertainment at Babyland, we had to jump in the car for the rest of the relaxing afternoon in downtown Helen. So we've left Babyland and we're now in Helen where the festivities and fun people and the spirits are high. There's a raging river behind me. We'll look at that too. All the beautiful stuff in Helen. We hope we can cap have capture every single bit of it on our back road treasure today. Because this is what it's about, getting out, taking those back roads and finding something fun to do. Okay, so we're down by the river now, and you know, you never know what you're going to see when you're somewhere like Helen, but you don't expect to see a snake just sitting on the rocks right close to a little cafe. Amazing stuff, looking at that snake. 
I wouldn't have known that snake was there if somebody hadn't said, hey, you see the snake there? I look down, boom, there's a snake. Crazy stuff. That's what you see when you take the back roads. You don't expect an heli. So you can't come to Helen without coming to the flood shop. Candy apples, caramel apples, we're gonna check this out. Well, we're at that shop and we've been here since 77. The owner that opened this was an old Heidelberg fan and he played that baritone that's hanging on that wall over there. Um, we specialize in fudge and we make our caramel from scratch. It's the best caramel you'll ever taste. <laughs> They always, they always have some great music in Helen. There's some bar over there where people are getting drunk. We're not doing that right now. But hey, we're going into the winery. There's going to be some wine in here. And I hope so. So let's go do that. Okay, now you have your raspberry on the left and your muscadoo on the right. Muscadine is actually indigenous to Georgia in the southern region. It is a kind of a sweeter grape. It actually is um, comes from the vineyard, Fox Vineyard, from Social Circle. It was the probably one of the first uh, wineries opened up in Georgia. It is uh, two and a half hours south from here. That's fine, take a picture of the beer. Just don't include me in it. Tell me when I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Is that Santana? Yes. I think it is. It's kind of groovy here in Helen. Stopped off at the cafe, got a delicious Miller Lite. And it's actually Miller Lite. A lot of times you get a Miller Lite glass and you got Budweiser in it, but not here, buddy. It's all original. So we went to Cleveland today to Babyland and we went out here to Helen. We had a lot of fun, found a lot of great people, a lot of great sweets, great entertainment, great beer, had a great time. I encourage you to take a day off, take the weekend off, take the back roads and find the treasures I did today and I had a great time. Till the next time, I'm Daryl D. Walton County Parks and Recreation Department reminds you of fall sports registration at Meridian Park, 
Felker Park and South Walton Park. This is going on May 4th through the 10th. Remember, they're closed on Sunday. For more information, contact Meridian Park at 770-266-1650 or Felker Park at 770-267-7525 or South Walton Park at 770-464-3374. And don't forget about the Fishing Derby. Meridian Park's Fishing Derby is Saturday, April 27th, 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. It happens at Matthews Park in Monroe, Saturday, May 4th, from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. And remember, there's no entry fee. It's free. So bring your family and enjoy some of Walton County's great parks. Hi, I'm Michael Davenport, the moth artist. And um, today I'm at Chick-fil-A doing some artwork. Um, I've been drawing years now. And um, my artwork, everybody, uh, different uh, people uh, find my artwork unusual. But it's, it's one of the best art that I uh, train myself to do. The good Lord gave me this talent. Um, years ago, I always wanted to be an artist. And I could not draw with both my hands when I did have both my hands. But two years after I lost my hand, I got into it. Um, something that most people love to see me at work. Uh, the artwork that I do is, is so unique because I do bulldog drawing, I do family portrait drawing, I do uh, any drawing that one will want. Regardless of where Michael might be, he's always got a fan close by who wants a peek at that awesome art. My name is Kevin Hines and they call me Chappie. Campus director for FCA Team Chapman for Georgia. I met Michael uh, at camp, uh, just being around Athens. And I know some of his family, and he'll come to Margaret Football Camp and he'll do his drawings, and it just really inspires these young people, and especially our football players, to see a man with limitations like he has, but yet he's out there doing it and, and uh, working hard. And so yeah, it's been a blessing, and you know, I think it's a testimony uh, to God giving him a gift and him using it. And uh, I think it's just a positive influence on many people that witness what he does and the quality of work that he does. I know a lot of people that got his paintings in their houses. So no, he's just a blessing. Owner T.J. Calloway of the Five Mile Club in Athens welcomes Michael as an employee and artist to help sell his work. This is the SAE Fraternity House. I was an SAE here at Georgia, and uh, we've got a series coming out here shortly. Michael's actually going to do one original of every fraternity and sorority house on campus, and uh, we're going to hope to promote those to the fraternity and sororities as prints and maybe T-shirts, and uh, you know, the the original would possibly be available to uh, to each chapter. Although this one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, he got like ideas for me, like putting stuff on T-shirts, you know, and so we're gonna come out with, you know, T-shirts uh, of uh, what people want, you know, and uh, not only bull, bulldog related, but you know, something and more in the nature scenery, something more right. in, you know, just come out with stuff that people want. Just to show you, he doesn't just do Georgia stuff. My my brother is a big FSU fan, and this is um, a really cool cool original that Michael did of uh, Chief Osceola on the horse. Today at Chick-fil-A, we watched as Michael became one with his canvas. His drawings are more than just lines on a canvas, but it's a part of him. But he does admit he's learned to keep up with the crowd with new tricks. So just learned myself how to draw and talk at the same time too. So. A lot of my fans, they don't, they um, wait on a picture, but can't yeah, several of them ask me a question while I'm doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Since Michael's accident as a young boy, he's learned to live with what he doesn't consider a handicap, but use what he has. He thanks God for each and every day and says every day is a blessing. In his opinion, he's happy with who he is. Every day is a beautiful blessing, you know, and that's, that's yeah. how God worked through us all, you know. God, he, he don't do a day without, you know, profit. Hey, buddy, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good.
Are you in need of tractor work, bush hogging, grading, cleaning, sod installs, and drainage repair? Then you need Bold Springs Landscape Solutions. Bold Springs Landscape Solutions is a licensed, insured, and certified landscape solutions company. Their services include grading and drainage, bush hogging, and clearing work, as well as fencing, landscape, and sod installation. Contact Bold Springs Landscape Solutions today. Today on Feed the Goats, we're going to try some rolls to see what they like. Here, Beth. Come here. You like the rolls? Yeah. Heidi. Heidi. Come here. You want to roll? Come here. Come here, Heidi. These rolls have a little garlic on them. I didn't know if they would eat them or not, but they seem to enjoy the garlic too. Creative artists can offer you a wide range of video production. Call the experts and discuss your project today, whether it's your special event or your company. Creative Artist, 770-267-7368. Creative Artist produces this program you're watching. Call Creative Artist today, 770-267-7368. Creative Artist, they'll put you in the spotlight.
When I do festivals, that's when it's really fun because we meet so many interesting people. It's really fun because a lot of times people who make soap will come in the booth. And so we'll just sit and talk and talk and talk about soap. And I'll get ideas from them, they'll get ideas from me. I think probably soap making people are all nice people because I haven't met any that weren't just super great people. And we share ideas and tell what's worked, what hasn't worked what uh, people seem to like, and that's so much fun. I made my first batch of soap and couldn't quit. Yeah, and the reason I made it was because I was keeping my grandson, and he had a lot of skin issues when he was real little. And uh, I thought, well, maybe I could come up with a soap that would be good for him, because he, he would get bumps on his skin. And But they were testing for allergies, which didn't show up anything and nobody knew what was going on, although he was having some allergic reactions sometimes that was evident. So um, I made my first batch of soap, and that was it. I could not quit. Even myself, when uh, like this summer, I used to have to just slather lotion on all the time because my skin would get dry. And all during the summer, in the warm months, I don't have to use any lotion. And then in the cooler months, I use just a little bit, not as much as I used to use at all because my skin is just staying so much, it's, it's staying moisturized a lot better. So um, I think when people tell me, I've got uh, people that I make goat milk soap for with no scents because they've got uh, very uh, severe reactions to any type of scent, even if it's the essential oil. So um, I can make soap for them, and I don't keep it in here in this room where it's got all the scents, but I take it upstairs and I'll, I'll put it out upstairs somewhere, not around all the odor of the essential oils, so they can have some soap, and I can guarantee them what's in that soap, because I did it myself, so I know what's in it. So that's, that's nice when people have a need and I can do something to help them.